As an entrepreneur, my next guest has come up with a lot of different ideas. Customized sporting goods, personalized surfboards, shampoo by mail, dog food individually formulated for your pup. Oh yeah, and perhaps his craziest idea of them all. A DVD mail subscription company he co-founded in 1997 called... Netflix. Mark Randolph helped put the company on the map as its first CEO before ceding that title to Reed Hastings, later moving on. Today, Netflix, as you know, has grown into a multi-billion dollar company with more than 150 million paid subscribers worldwide. And that doesn't even count those of you tuning in on your friends, brothers, roommates, parents' account. Now Randolph is telling the story of how it all began and what guidance it provides for disruptors in 2019. In his new book, that will never work, the birth of Netflix and the amazing life of an idea. He joins me. Mark, pleasure to meet you. Thanks for being here. Nice meeting you. Wait, and people are sharing accounts? <laughs> Hold on a second. got to make a phone call. Describe the moment when the idea was hatched. The moment. Well, there is no real singular moment where an idea is hatched. These things don't spring out of thin air in some moment over a late fee. However... However, if there was an inciting event, as they say in screenwriter speak, it happened when Reed Hastings and I, my co-founder, yeah. were commuting back and forth to work. And we were bouncing around crazy ideas, like you talked about shampoo, yeah. dog food, and this even crazier idea of renting videos by mail. And all of a sudden, we heard about this new technology called the DVD, mm -hmm. small, thin movies, and boom, light bulb went off. And we said, maybe we can mail these. And we turned the car around mid-commute, bought a little music CD. Patsy it. Klein, I've heard you say. Yeah, Is that true? Right. It was, yeah, Patsy Klein's that's greatest great. hits, not just any <laughs> Patsy okay. Klein. And? Stuck it in an envelope, and we mailed it to Reed's house. And it got there in less than 24 hours for the price of a stamp, and voila. I have to say I'm a little disappointed with the story, I think, because you're telling me this story of the $40 late fee for your co-founder's apocryphal. That wasn't the generator of this idea? Well, ideas have lots of contributors. So yes, there certainly was a late fee, but there also was someone who had spent many, many years in direct marketing, yeah. people who knew algorithms, people who worked in video stores. Do you remember Sorry. the angst of the late fee, by the way? I do. I can feel it in my body when you go in for the three ninety nine video and you had to pay $12 in late fees. Do you remember that? I certainly do. And in fact, you know, one of the reasons we felt had the hubris to go after Blockbuster was lots of people I mean, to put it bluntly, hated that. And you always want to go after a competitor that people hate. How many Blockbuster stores were there when you started this thing? There was 9,000. 9,000, okay. So this was not a straight line success. Uh, we're not going to go through all the gory details. But one thing that it appears to me from reading your book and listening to some of your interviews that was a straightish line was a very un-Silicon Valley-like culture within Netflix. Is that a fair uh, statement? It is. Uh, what's unusual is not that they all, they, all, they all start that way. What's mm -hmm. unusual is we preserve that. Describe the culture. So at the beginning, there's so many things to do. You just don't have time to tell people what to do. You purely say, you see that hill over there? Meet me in three weeks or whatever. And here's what you have to have accomplished. You have complete freedom of how you get there, but I expect you to arrive. And that's a culture that's very common in a tiny company. Mm -hmm. What's unusual is a company like Netflix preserving that when you get to 100 or 1,000 or 7,000 employees. So a lot of respect for the people who work there. Speaking of disruptors, what was Amazon like in 97 when this thing started, your thing started? It was a little bit of a surprise to me because they were the pioneer of e-commerce. And back mm -hmm. in 97, if you can believe this, they only sold books. books. Is that really true? It is. And, and we got the call one day from Jeff Bezos saying, why don't you boys come on up and take a meeting? And we knew that he was thinking about buying us, that he were going to enter their next category being video. Why don't you just say yes? <laughs> Seriously. Well, we were about two months in, so we were at that perfect inflection point of we hadn't yet bumped into all the hard stuff, and all the other things were done. We were saying, wow, we are right at the right spot. What did he offer you? How much? Well, we didn't know exactly. He what hinted. Probably 15 to $16 million. Yeah, that was real which, money in those days. Well, I owned a third of the company, so that was pretty good for a year's work. But, you know, Reed and I, for the, us, it was more like a commitment ceremony. Because yeah. remember, this was an idea that nobody thought would work. And here was Jeff Bezos, who was the pioneer of e-commerce, mm. offering to buy us. You know, speaking of uh, that will never work, one of the that will never works 
was, okay, this DVD thing is fine now, but everybody, at least all of you guys, knew streaming is in the future. The only question is, how fast is the streaming going to come? Well, despite the, this, that will never work, it did. Why were you able to make the transition? Why did the transition work from DVD to, to uh, well, streaming? There was two reasons everyone said that will never work. And one, as we said, was Blockbuster. The other was that everyone thought imminently mm -hmm. they'll be streaming or downloading movies. But we thought it's unknown. It could be years. And we positioned the company not around shipping plastic or about streaming, but about finding movies you love. Because we knew that works with DVD. It'll work with streaming. And it'll work when you can get a holographic projection or everything. Are you really that visionary, or is this after the fact? When I, when I read that, the <laughs> whole notion that we know the, the delivery vehicle is the DVD now, but it doesn't matter what the delivery vehicle is as long as it's something that entertains you. You literally thought that, or is that retroactive history? We absolutely going? thought that. I mean, we didn't know how it would happen. In fact, I thought it was going to be downloading. I couldn't envision it would be fast enough to stream, but I knew it was digital. And I just thought, who knows, it could take years and years and years for it to happen. So not only were you fired at one point, as CEO at least, yeah. but you were fired by your co-founder and you were fired, fired by PowerPoint, both unusual circumstances. Is that a fair description? Well, I wouldn't take, say, fired, because when, he, when Reed poked his head in the door one evening and said, Got to talk. Got to talk. For a while I thought, am I being fired? But Reed was saying something different. He was saying we should run the company together that this is a hard enough problem. If we want the company to succeed, we have a better chance of doing that. And I decided he's probably right. Even though my dream was to, of course, be the CEO of a successful company, the bigger dream was being successful. You took that in stride, too. Well, I won't say that happened instantaneously. It took a little bit of wine and a few days to kind of get over it. But Do you think uh, Freud being your, what is he, <laughs> your great-granduncle, did that help with the, you dealing with that or no? Yes, I called Siggy that night. And, <laughs> okay, uh, so you're now on the outside looking in. A couple of quick things. Is Netflix still true to all the principles that matter to you, both the internal culture and the business model? Is it true to them? Surprisingly, yes. They've mm -hmm. managed to take this freedom and responsibility culture Culture and make it work in a 7,000-person company. Do you have any regret about leaving? Zero. Do you have a relationship with Reed Hastings? Yeah, good. Good. We're still friends. What's your favorite original uh, uh, show on Netflix? Probably Narcos. Oh, I love that. But too. I'm really That's eager to see the uh, next BoJack Horseman uh, series. So uh, we talked about on the radio the other day. Yeah. So uh, you've done a bunch of startups. What's the moral of the story for the wannabe disruptors in 2019? Get started that most people have the idea in their head and they want to leave it in their head where it's safe and they can add employees and users, but you've got to get them out and collide them with the real world. As this book shows, as Netflix shows, the idea you start with is almost never the idea you finish with, but you don't find that out until you start. One last favor, if you ever come up with that individualized dog food, you'll call me? Absolutely, I now I know that I've got at least one customer. Your book is great, thanks Thank so you. much. My pleasure being with you. Mark Randolph. The book again is That Will Never Work, The Birth of Netflix and the Amazing Life of an Idea.